A striking empirical effect in many countries is the growing disparity between the wages to high-skilled workers and low-skilled workers. That's known as the wage premium. And I want to develop a simple analytical framework that takes a look at this in the context of global value chains. Now, global value chains, or, or value chains uh, generally, is a way to think about the various activities that a company undertakes in order to make a, a, a final good. So they have research and development activities, they've got components that they have to use, the final assembly, they've got marketing uh, costs associated with getting a product to uh, consumers. And one of the things that we're going to argue here is that the, the increased globalization of these different activities has an impact potentially on high-skilled and low-skilled workers across the world. So we're going to develop a, uh, a very simple model that is uh, taken from the Feenstra and Taylor textbook that looks at two different countries, home and foreign. So home is going to be designated by age and, and foreign by star. And we're going to make some uh, basic assumptions about wages in of high skilled and low skilled workers in the context of different activities requiring increasingly high skilled workers. So assembly is going to uh, take the relatively low skilled workers, components a little bit higher skilled, marketing a bit higher skilled, R&D, where, the, where you have the engineers and the scientists, have the high skills. So as you go down this in this direction, you require higher and higher skilled workers. Now, the two countries that we're going to analyze have workers that can do all of these activities in principle, um, but they're going to be different wages. We've got the low-skilled workers' wage in the home country, the high-skilled wage in the home country, in the analogs des designated by the stars in the uh, foreign country. Okay, so we have these underlying wages that are going to be determined by the interaction of supply and demand in the, in, in the two markets. Now we want to make a couple of assumptions about the relationships among these wages. And let me be very explicit about this. So we're going to assume, for example, that the low-skilled worker wage in the home country is going to be greater than the low-skilled worker in the foreign country. So you can imagine this as being developed and developing uh, world. So workers in, in China or for low-skilled workers are going to be making less than in, the, uh, in a developed world. So implicitly no factor price equalization. Uh, so maybe this is a consequence of differences in technology, for example. And that the high-skilled workers in the home country also are more expensive for the same task than high-skilled workers in the foreign country. And finally, we're going to make an assumption about the relative wages, essentially the wage premium, in the home country compared to the wage premium in the foreign country. Now, so one way to think about this is that the, uh, the home country is the place where there's relatively high demand for the high-skilled workers, so their wages are going to be higher because they're take, uh, this is where most of these activities on this right-hand side are, are going to take place. Now finally, we're going to draw an arbitrary line between these two activities. And so I'd like you to imagine that before any of the changes that we're going to analyze, that the foreign country is where the assembly takes place, and that beyond this point, all of these activities take place in the home country. So we start out with a a distribution of tasks and, and a distribution of the 
of the relative wages in, in the two countries. Finally, let's depict this in terms of relative supplies and relative demands in the home and foreign. So we've got the relative wage in the home country. We've got the quantity of high-skilled workers relative to the, the quantity of uh, low-skilled workers. The intersection of these two is going to give you the, uh, the, the relevant relative wage. And then in the foreign country, you've got the analog. Supply and demand. Okay. And so we've got this initial situation. Now what we're going to imagine is that something changes. That could be, for example, a change in the technology that is um, that allows some activities to take place in the foreign country, say some you know the com uh, com uh, say the internet that allows certain activities to be monitored or blueprints sent across uh, borders, whatever, that changes the ability of where components can be assembled. You can imagine it being a change in the trade policy in the foreign country. So they now allow um, uh, firms to bring products in and, and, and export as they wish, and so that might potentially change where some of these activities take place, or a change in foreign direct, direct investment policy. But the, the bottom line with this is we want to imagine a situation where the range of activities that take place in foreign expands, so that you for it will say go to a prime, so that a, a greater range of tasks, higher skilled tasks take place in the foreign country, and fewer of those uh, relatively low skill tasks for the for the home country take place there. So now we want to think about how these two things, the increased demand for uh, what is uh, relatively high skilled in the foreign country, and a drop in the demand for the low skilled activities in the in the home country, how that affects the wages. So let's start with foreign. This change in the demand for what is, for them, a relatively high skilled task is going to increase that demand curve. Now there's a demand for labor, or for, uh, for different kinds of, of labor, but what we're talking about is the relative demand. So you've got the high skilled labor for them increasing because more of these components are, are being uh, produced in this country. So what you have is an increase in the relative wage of the two activities, an increase in the wage premium in the foreign country, if you will, the developing country, because there's a higher demand for what is then, for them, a high-skilled activity. So you have an increase in the wage premium here. Now let's think about this in the home country. What we have here for, uh, for, the, for, for them is that one of these activities that used to take place here, which was for them a relatively low-skilled activity, the com components of manufacturing, goes away. So you have a a, a fall in the demand for the low-skilled labor, maybe no change in the high-skilled labor. Actually, you may have an increase in the demand for that if, if there are more R&D activities associated with taking uh, the, uh, the component assembly abroad, but let's set that aside. Let's focus really on the, the drop in the demand for the low-skilled workers in home, the home country. 
So since this is a relative demand, the demand for, le for the low skill goes down, which increases the relative demand for high skill. And as a consequence, what you see is that there's an increase in the wage premium in that country as well. So when countries can transfer tasks across borders in a, an environment where there are different activities that require different levels of skill, the change in, in the, the demand in the foreign country, the relatively uh, low wage country, if you will, will increase the wage premium there and increase the, the wage premium in the home country because of these changes in the, you know, where these activities uh, take place. In short, when we think about these things in the context of global value change and trade and tasks, we can see this expansion of income inequality across countries as activities move from one country uh, into another.